So have y'all heard this song before? Yes. So will I. The theme of this camp is So Will I, which comes from a song. Let me clue you in here. I'm going to read you the words just so you'll have an idea of, of and I know they'll be playing it, but um, when I found out that this was the camp topic, the first thing I did was pull up the, the words. I didn't want to hear it. I wanted to read the words myself. Um, and so I'm going to read it to you really quickly. Title, So Will I. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time, with no point of reference, she spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. And as you speak, a hundred billion, billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planet form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I see you, your heart, and everything you've made, every burning star, every fire of grace. If creation sings your praise, so will I. God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable into your void. For once you have spoken all nature and science, follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath. Evolving in the pursuit of what you said, if it reveals your nature, so will I. I see your heart in everything you say, every painted sky, the canvas of your grace. If creation obeys you, so will I. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roar your greatness, so will I. For everything exists to lift you high, and so will I. If the winds go where you send them, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sum of all our praises still falls shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. God of salvation, you chased down my heart. Through all of my failures and pride, on a hill you created the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life so I could find it there. If you left the grave behind, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done, every part of design and work of art you called love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I see your heart a billion different ways, every precious one, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount to your desire, you're the one who never leaves the one behind. Those are powerful words, Amen. right? Those, I mean, that's right? beautiful, beautiful lyrics. And as I as I read through those, you know, over the last few weeks, it's just it's amazing how much that that song speaks to me as an individual, where my my testimony and where my heart is. And and as you can see, the words of that song, she's pointing out God's nature, that who He is, how He created things, that there's that there was purpose and love and everything that He did. Um. And the point, obviously, is that if God did all these things and it, the intent was, of all of his creation was to worship him, right, then our response should be, so so will I, right? Hence the title makes it pretty clear. So by saying and declaring, if you if you make that and say those words, so will I. Hey, let's go have lunch. So will I, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join you on that. You're saying, right, when you when you say that response to this song, if you if your heart acknowledges, so will I, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna worship you, I'm gonna go where you tell me, I'm gonna do what you say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna glorify you, I'm gonna represent you, I'm gonna do everything that it is that you've created me to be. You're saying you understand who Jesus is, why he came and died, and likewise, I'm gonna follow in that pursuit. I'm gonna do what it is I was created to do, which was worship. See, so I worship him with a song, maybe on Sunday morning or on Wednesday nights. Or maybe at a special event like this, right? We spend time in, in corporate worship with, with music and, and lyrics of beautiful songs that move our hearts. Music, does music just have a way of like speaking like so deep, right? <laughs> music has a way of just speaking to us. I am completely musically challenged is the word I will choose. But music speaks to my heart. It makes me, it makes me tear up. It just, it, there's something about words of, of lyrics and putting it to music that just makes things make sense sometimes, right? If anyone's ever had a broken heart, you've probably heard a song or two or been mad at someone, heard a song or two that you're like, yep, yeah, that's how I'm feeling right now. But the thing is, is that worship isn't just about singing a song corporately. It's, it's my life. My life is worship. My actions, my choices, my thoughts, my time can be worship to him when I walk in obedience or it could be disobedience if I don't choose to walk in that. First Chronicles 16, 23 through 31 says, 
sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day. That's, that's telling you what to do, to proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations and marvelous deeds among all of his people. For great is the Lord, most worthy of praise, for he is to be feared above all gods, little g gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families and nations, ascribe to the Lord the glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. It's due to him because he created it and you were made to worship him, so it's due to him. It's, it's our response. Bringing an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The world is firmly established it cannot be moved let the heavens rejoice let the earth be glad let them say among the nations the lord reigns this is another one romans 12 it says therefore i urge you brothers and sisters in view of god's mercy so in view of god's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god this is your true and proper worship <coughs> what's your true and proper worship to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice that would be your time, your thoughts, your actions, your choices, right? That's how you offer up. And that's, it says this is your true and proper worship. Do not conform, which means don't be like the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That means every night when you go to bed, you say, God, I know I have failed today. I've fallen short, but guess what? I'm getting up tomorrow. I'm going to try again with everything I have. That's the, the, that's the renewing of your mind is that you continuously acknowledge where you fall short and what you're going to do about it different tomorrow. And you get up and you don't stop. And then it says, then you will be able to, to be to test and be approved of what God's will is, his please, his good and pleasing and perfect will. See, God wants you to offer yourself as a living sacrifice, as a form of worship. That's why you were created. That's why you were created. The last long, the last line of the song, right, is where is my topic. It says, The one who never leaves the one behind. And I love, I love this because I spoke. Golly, it's been probably a year or two ago when it was like, I just, I've heard that story my whole life, right, about the 99 sheep and one goes off. And I'm like, that's, that's a dumb move. It's, and in my flesh, that's not a good business decision. If I'm a farmer or a rancher, if one goes off, I'm going to let it go. I got 99 I got to keep around. Sheep are dumb. If you don't know, they're very dumb animals. So I'm not going to go after the one. But then in a spiritual realm, when I realized that I was the one, I'm like, oh my God, thank you for coming after me. Like, thank you for not doing what makes sense. Like, for not what, you know, and we, are, as people, can also be like sheep a little bit. We have our moments, right? See, Jesus died on the cross. That was the greatest act of love in all of the history of, of the world. And if you love people you're going to share that message. If you truly in your heart of hearts believe that anyone who has not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will spend eternity separated from God in hell and you do not share that message, that's contradictory to me, right? You believe it and you and everything you have, you believe that this is the message that will save someone from eternity in hell, but yet you keep it to yourself? That is confusing to me. And we are all guilty of it. I write messages and 99% of the time I'm running from from conviction from my own heart, right? This is not about you. I played sports. Let me just, let me just, I should have prefaced my conversation with this. I played sports. And the way that my coach would get me to perform better is she would be really mean. Like my teammates would even get really mean to me on the day of the game because when I was mad, I played so much better. I don't know what it is. It's true to this day. When I'm mad, I can get focused. And so um, because that's, the way I tend to be motivated, that's the way I tend to preach. Like, I like to be, like, in your face. Sometimes at, at transition, I'm like, oh, my God, I just got done yelling at them for, like, four minutes straight. My throat hurts because I'm like, you need to do it. And I'm like, okay, sorry. So I apologize if, I'm coming, if, if my message is harsh. I don't mean for it to be harsh. I mean it to be convicting. I mean it to, for you to go, wow, I, I really maybe, do I really believe what I say? Because I don't share the gospel. So do it's one of two things. Either I don't believe it or I don't love other people. It's got to be one of the other two. If you're not sharing who Jesus is, you either don't believe it or you don't love people. And that's a hard choice because I, I, I fall into that category. I don't share the gospel as much as I could and should. See, when Jesus died on the cross, this was, his, this was God's plan, right? To, to not leave you behind. This is where it's revealed to us that God didn't want us to be left behind. Because 
that's, we wouldn't have had access to God. We would be separated from God eternally because of the sin of our life. We cannot be in the presence of a holy God. Therefore, Jesus had to come and be that perfect sacrifice. In that act, he's showing you that he wants you back. See, our focus as, as individuals and humans, we tend to be what's on the next thing, what's the next sport, the next test I have, the next relationship, the next video game, the next movie, whatever's next. But guys, there's a now. What about the now? What, what are you doing with the now? See, I like to look into the future and have a five-year, 10-year, 15-year plan, but I cannot let that be the only thing that my mind focuses on because there are people around me day in and day out that need to know the love of God. And that if, 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 if he came to save me and I believe that, I have to share that. So how often, if, if the, the line that we're focusing on is right, is that, that he never leaves the one behind. So if, if the response is so alive. So who are you looking that's been left behind? Are you looking around the room? At lunch to see who's been left behind? Are you looking around, you know, at, at school to see who's off by themselves? Are you looking around to, to see who, is, who has been alienated or maybe is different than you or just isn't fitting in? Have you, do you look around for the one who seems out on the outskirts? Because that's what God does. See, we have these personas that we've created, these identities, right? In this room, you, you, as I start saying them, you'll start thinking of people, the, right, the popular one, the athlete, the star student, the performer, the good girl or the bad boy. I'm sorry, good girl, bad girl. Whatever, you get it. Good girl, bad girl, good boy, bad boy. There you go. Sorry. But see, do you see through that? See, I'm more than my identity. You see him as, oh, she's a preacher. No, I got real struggles. I got real life. I got real problems. I got real things that I'm dealing with just like you do. I don't care if you're popular, if you're a star athlete, if you're the performer, the girl, the bad girl, whatever you are, you got real stuff going on. Come on. And the identity of what, how y'all have labeled each other is not real. Guess what? Some of y'all desire and would give anything to be the popular girl. That popular girl struggles. Guess what? She has to maintain that. There's, there's a, a right? The, the person that's off to the side, the lonely, the nerd, whoever you want to call them, they have struggles. They want to be something else, but guess what? They're, that's not, they're not meant to be someone else. They're meant to be who God made them to be, and if they would stop worrying about the identity of how people recognize them, and they would simply focus on what they're made to do, which is worship God, they would find peace and joy and happiness and all the things that Josh talked about. But our focus is on what's next, how do people perceive me, and we're not looking around for the things that we're made to do. Sorry, I lost my spot. But life is real and life is happening now. And we shouldn't act like, oh, well, tomorrow I'll deal with it. No, let's deal with it now. Today is the day we're going to deal with our junk. Today. The song points out that we should act and live like Christ. So when was the last time you got out of your group, your friends, and you went and you found and you talked to someone else? Not because you wanted to feel good about who you are, but because you love people and you recognize the need. We've all been in that place where we feel like we're the oddball, the odd man out. We all have been there. It's not a fun place to be. And your one act of kindness of, of having that conversation or sitting in fellowship with them can make all the difference in the world. There are a lot of people that we overlook day in and day out. See, the name of Jesus is known. I bet if you ask the majority of people you run into if they've heard the name of Jesus, they would say yes. But do they know the gospel message? There's a difference. See, if you, if you say so will I, then you also have to chase after the one that's left behind. God goes after the one on the sidelines. He goes after the one that's hurting. He goes after the one that's broken. He goes after the one in, the, in an utter place of chaos. The ones that are hurting and broken over their choices. See, I was the good girl in this group. Sometimes it's the things that you don't put in your notes that you feel compelled to share that hurt the most because you realize that God's chased after you. Yeah. Don't think that who you are now is who you will always be because I can tell you I have woken up next to people and I'm like, I don't know you and I don't know what we just did. Wow. That's not a place you want to be. That is a lonely place that you do not want to go, but I'm telling you right now, and my tears are from a desire more than anything for you to understand the love of your God. 
is that if you do not submit to the things of God and walk in worship and give him your all, you might not end up where I am, but you will end up somewhere you don't want to be. You will end up somewhere. Mark my words. I have been in this very room with a student who later on in life attempted to kill his girlfriend and then ended up killing himself. Who attended a camp from our church? Do not think that your life is, is in a bubble and that because you are in a place now that you don't have to protect that. Guess what? If you wake up tomorrow and you serve God today and you don't serve him tomorrow, you're farther away from him and you're taking a step towards destruction. Because left to your own devices, you will follow your flesh and you will fall miserably short of the love of God. And outside of someone going, hey, that person seems like they're on the outside. Let me go, at, let me go chase after them. Because guess what? God sends you to chase after them. God uses us to be the messenger. And so if we're not going after those people that do not know the love of God, then who is? He says this, Romans 10, 14. How then can they call on the name they have not believed? Let me say it again. How then can they call on the name they have not believed? And how can they believe in the name who have, they have never heard? And how will they hear without someone preaching it to them. I never in a million years thought I would be up on a stage preaching the love of God. But you don't have to be up on a stage to preach the love of God to preach the love of God. Amen. You do it day in and day out as you encounter people and as you walk like Josh talked about earlier where it's not your shirt that tells people you love Jesus, it's how you act and how you behave. We've talked about Matthew 18 where, right, where the man has 100 sheep and he goes after, after the one. That's our God. He cares about the one that's on the sideline. He doesn't do what makes sense. He doesn't do what's profitable to him. Here's another example in Luke 15. It says this. Not as popular, not as common of a story shared, but same topic. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Does she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, for I have found the lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. One sinner who repents makes the angels that are surrounding God rejoice. See, if you feel alone and lost, I have good news for you. He's seeking you. He wants you to accept him either for the first time and be found in him, or for those of you that have known him and have walked away, guess what? I have more good news. He wants you back. And he is chasing you down. It says this in Hebrews. It says, keep your lives free from the love of money, not money, the love of money, and be content with what you have. Because God said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. See, God doesn't leave us. We leave God. It's not God leaving us when you wake up one day and you find yourself in a heap of mess and you want to turn and blame God. No, you're the one that walked away. He's not the one that walked away. He's been right there waiting on you to come back. And we like to blame him for our choices. See, he's not there to be your butler and just clean up after your mess. What we like to do is go, God, I know that I'm sleeping with my boyfriend and I know it's wrong, but I know you love me, so you're going to forgive me in 10 years when I decide to repent. And, and no, no, no. That's presuming on God's grace. And that's not a healthy place to be because God knows your heart and he knows that you're doing the actions and it pre, it's like premeditated. Like, well, I'll just repent later. No, that's your heart. That's a heart condition that you need to deal with. <laughs> if you know you're not walking in the things of the Lord, then you need to repent. God's not, he's not a harsh God. He's a loving God. And when you come to him and you say, oh my God, I have, I have messed up. I have done something I never thought I would do. He's going to give you a hug. He's going to love you and wrap his arms around you and say, it's okay. But it's when you do it with the intent of, of, well, I'll just say I'm sorry later. No, he knows your heart, and you're not truly repentant in that, mo in that, in that moment. An admission of guilt, admitting you're guilty, is not the same as repentance. It's not the same as repentance. Because a lot of us would acknowledge that we sin, but a lot of us are not repentant about it. See, we, we, don't, we shouldn't take a casual attitude towards sin. See, a lot of us, we're really good at justifying and seeking and explaining away. We, we don't understand. We have a very wrong and skewed view of what sin is. I don't know, but if you remember, the angels around God rejoice when you repent. So it's pretty important to God. It's a pretty big deal when your heart is truly repented before him. So how is it that you respond when you feel conviction? 
How, how do you, this is like for you, think about it. How do you respond when you feel convicted? Because I can tell you every Sunday morning that we have church, which is every Sunday morning, you will watch people get up and leave about 10 minutes before service lets out. You know why? They're feeling conviction. They don't want to acknowledge that they're wrong. They, they, they've admitted it. They don't want to repent from it. See, God's word strikes a chord in their heart, and so they say, mm, I'm going to leave that one before this gets too serious. How do you respond? Okay, look, sometimes people have to leave for work. Don't judge people as they're leaving church, okay? Just, I'm just saying. But, right, you'll see it if you watch for it. People get up and leave. No differently than sometimes we just, oh, I really got to go to the bathroom right now. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes it's conviction that you want to get up and you want to get away from the truth because it's making you feel a little bit of indigestion maybe. Does it present itself as anxiety? Does it present itself as, a, as an upset stomach? Does it just say, oh, I'm just sleepy, right? All these excuses that we all make. We all have our own, whatever it is, right? There are valid things that we deal with, but then there are things that our bodies do and ways that our minds decide to respond because we don't want to acknowledge that we need to repent before the Lord because a little bit of us likes our sin. The Bible says that your sin will taste good for a while and then it will turn to gravel in your mouth. I don't know about you, but if I served gravel for dinner, I'm pretty sure I'm going to hear some complaints in the lunchroom. Right? Can I go tell them right now? We would like some gravel for dinner. No, but that's what sin tastes like in your life when it's no longer fun. The enemy is so good at tempting you just to get you to buy it on, and then guess what? Now it tastes terrible, and you've got guilt and remorse, and you think, well, I can't go back to God. He's a terrible, mean God. He's going he's gonna to spank me. No, he's not. When you have a truly repentant heart, his angels are going to dance around him and celebrate. <coughs> See, so why, do, why is it that I want you to understand that you were created to worship? Why is it that I want you to understand the importance of how God is chasing you? Because then you can say, so will I. I'm going to chase after all that. If God's chasing me, I'm going to chase him. I'm going to chase him. And if I can do that, then my life is going to be proper. I'm not perfect. But things in, 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 my, in my spirit are going to be good. And then I can truly love other people. That's the whole point. Worship God, love other people. And allowing your time and your thoughts and your actions to be done to the glory and the worship of God, the creator of the universe, this is where you find peace. It doesn't matter how people look at you. It doesn't matter what group you fall into. It doesn't matter how many friends you have or don't have or where you've been or what you've done. You have the God of creation celebrating over you repenting. And celebrating over you coming back. And then you go find the next one. And the two of y'all go find the next two. And then we end up in a room filled with people who desire, who are not perfect, but desire to be in worship before the Lord. I, 10, 1 Timothy says this. I urge you then, first of all, that petition, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kingdoms, for kings and all nations. Sorry. It's very tiny font, but I'm scared to touch it because it keeps jumping around. For kings and all those in authority, we need to live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people, everyone say all people. All people. He wants all people to be saved. So what's the will of God? That all people would be saved and come to know the knowledge of the truth, which is the truth of the gospel, who Jesus is, why he died. For there is one God, there is one mediator between God and mankind, right? So mediator is a person that comes in between and they're like, like if, uh, I do it a lot with work. Like we have um, we have a person over here that wants, you know, $10,000 and this person over here is at $6,000. So there's a person that goes into this room and they say, okay, well, where are you at? Well, we, we can do $6,500. And they go back into this room and they say, okay, well, they want $6,500. You're at ten. Can you What can you come down to? And they're like, okay, I'll do $8,500. And then they go back into this room and there's just, been go, there's just one person that's going back and forth that has nothing to gain or lose from the settlement. And then we he mediates between the two groups. That's what Jesus is. He's the mediator. He says, for there is one God. There is one mediator, which is Jesus, between the God of mankind, the man of Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. See, this generation, your peers, your teachers, your parents, is full, I'm talking full, of people that want to know that they have a purpose, that God loves them, that God's going to welcome them back into his arms when they repent, and that he died for them. 
it's not hard to find these people. Don't tell me that's, a, right, that's not an excuse we get to have. I wish it was an excuse we had to look. We've just been rocking and rolling and discipling and loving people and we gotta conquer the whole community. There's no one left. That's not an excuse we have. See, some of your peers this weekend that aren't here, some of the people that you know from school, they're making life-altering changes, decisions this weekend. So while you're worshiping God, they're out doing things that they will regret for the rest of their lives. Do you realize that? That classmates that you go to school with, not necessarily your best friend, but people that you know right now are making decisions that they will regret for the rest of their lives. So who's going to tell them about the love of God? If you have the truth, you've got to share it. See, I asked my husband, I was, last night when I went to put this down on paper, I, I kind of joked with him. I'm like, hey, can you write a message? And he was like, sure. I'm like, okay, well, when I said, when, I, when you hear the phrase, the one who never leaves the one behind, what do you think? And as a true firefighter, you know, they have this motto, two in, two out. When they go into a house fire, two of them go in together and two of them come out together. That's their motto, two in, two out. That motto doesn't mean that both that when they come out, they're both alive, right? There are terrible things that happen in house fires and firefighters that get killed, but guess what? They're not leaving that firefighter behind. They're carrying them out. That's one of the things that um, with my husband's station, they started hiring a lot more females. And I'm like, look, I don't care if you hire a female. All I care about is can they carry my husband out of a burning house? That's all I care about. Like, if they can pass that test, they're welcome on board. Like, come on into the family. I don't care. I don't care about their gender. I just care, can they help my husband if he's in a place of need? Because that's, that's life and death. But, guys, guys, what we're talking about here is life and death as well. So, if firefighters, right, you think about the camaraderie that you think about that comes with a firefighter group, or like maybe with military, right, they don't leave someone behind. They're going to do everything in their ability to bring every one of their crew back with them. So as the body of Christ, shouldn't we have that same mentality that, that no one in this room can be gone for two weeks without someone reaching out to them? Or that no one in this room cannot be held accountable amongst your peers and say, hey, who did you share the love of God with this week? Better get on that, right? That, to me, is the accountability and the camaraderie that we have to have with one another to say, look, if you go, I'm going with you, and I'm coming back with you, too. And not only that, let's make it two out, three in. <coughs> when two of us go out, let's bring another person back with us who loves the Lord. Let's change that. I just made that up. Let's change it. It's not two in, two out. It's two out, three in, or two out, four in. It's two out, six in. Because as we love people, we're going to attract them to the love of God. I love definition. De the definition of evangelism. The spreading of the Christian gospel by public preaching or personal witness. That's you saying, you know what? I don't know all of God's word, and I probably should read it more. But you know what? I know that when I repented of my sins, that I felt the weight of the world lift off my shoulders. And I now understand that God has a purpose for me. That's all I know, but I know it's good. I know how it feels. I know that God is with me. That's all you got to do. Hey, I used to do these kind of things. Now I don't. When I, when I try to cuss, it just feels dirty. It feels wrong because God is in me and he says, no, that's not how you talk. That's not how you talk. That's not how you represent me. Y'all think it's weird. Repent about your words and it'll happen if you're truly repentant. I'm starting to wrap up. Here we go. 1 Peter 3.15. But in your heart to revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks the reason for the hope that you have. But do it with gentleness and respect. You do not have to know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation in order to share the love of God. That is an excuse that you make, like we talked about earlier. You don't even have to use one scripture <laughs> in order to share the love of God. But you do have to be able to, if someone says to you, why are you so happy? What, what's your response going to be? I'm just having a good day, sunshine's out, right? No, I have the love of God in me who chased after me when I was a heathen. I know that's the old lady term. So when I was a sinful, wicked person and he chased after me because he desired for me to be back. 
and he sent someone to love me and to show me what God was all about. 2 Corinthians 5.20, right? Therefore, we are Christ's ambassadors. I mean, you're his representative. Through God, we are making, uh, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled. So he is making, when you speak to other, he's making that appeal to that other spirit and that other person through you. And the last scripture I have here is Mark 16. He says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all of creation. He didn't say to all people, he said to all of creation. I mean, it's funny because our, our, the song about, so I talked about creation, that the rocks are crying out silently and worshiping God. But the wind, when it goes, like it's, when you think about it from that perspective, um, and the Bible also says that if you won't praise him, that he'll replace you with a rock. And I'm like, I refuse to be replaced by a rock. You know, like surely I have more to offer than a rock, but if God's going to get his worship one way or the other, it's either going to be through you being obedient and allowing your life to be used by him, or he'll have the rocks worship him. So are you truly ready to say, so will I, and worship him with all that you have and all that you are? Are you ready to love people the way that God does and to go after the one who was left behind? Are you ready to share the love of Christ to the world around you? If your answer is no, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? If you're, if you're not prepared, if you feel like you have valid reasons, what are you going to do about it? Sometimes there's valid reasons, right? I, I, I have these, whatever, let's talk through them. Let's come up with a plan. That way, that reason is no longer valid and let's go out and share the love of Christ. I can promise you that if you say so will I, that if you truly in your heart of hearts today, God, I, so will I, I will follow you, I will serve you, I will worship you, that you will find joy and fulfillment and that you will understand that your life is accomplishing something for eternity. See, I believe, and the only reason I'm here today is I believe that God put a, put a message in, and, and the ability to communicate his message through his word to you. And that somehow, in some way, that eternity will change because of today. Yep. See, that's what I believe. I, otherwise, I'd be home with my kids watching their soccer game or watching my husband do his belt test. Like, there's things that my family are doing that are important today. But God said, no, go chase, go chase after the youth that need to know that they're loved. Go give God's word and let them know that they are loved. It doesn't matter their situation, their circumstance, what they've done, where they've been, their identities, Whatever it is that God is chasing them, this is me, Christ, as an ambassador through me to you right now, saying he loves you, he's chasing you, come repent before him, let the angels dance around his throne, and then go share the love of Christ with someone else. Yes. That is why I'm here today, and I believe, and I, my prayer is that because of this message, that somewhere in your spirit you are moved you truly repent about where you've been, not just admit it, but repent, which means you don't go back to it. Listen. I will tell you that when I truly, truly gave my life to God, there was one time, one time I went back to my old ways. One time. And I will never do it again. Because it was like this battle was going on. It was so surreal. Like I could feel like the tug of like, yes and no, and yes and no. And my flesh won and it was like I, I really I struggled with that because I'm like God I repented like I truly was sorry but yet I went back and I struggled with that one time even though I had done it a hundred other times it was that one time after I had truly repented before the king of kings and lord of lords that I felt guilty it makes no sense, right? I'd done it a hundred times. Why didn't I feel guilty about it all this time? Because I wasn't a child of God then. Now I am, and I knew better. I knew better then, but I, I really knew God was in me and that he was saying no, but I did it anyway. So please don't fall short. I go, well, I blew it. Guess I'm done. I'll go sit on the sidelines. No, that's, that's an enemy trying to trick you. But you got to understand who you are before you can go share the love of Christ. you got to be in Christ before you can share the love of Christ. Otherwise, you're giving a false message and you're confusing people. You're confusing people. If you're not truly in Christ, don't, not go, don't represent him until you are. And if you're not sure, then let's talk and we'll figure it out. It's real simple. But guys, I want you to understand that he is the God that is chasing after the one. And my prayer is that today each one of you are the one. But 
if it's just one of you, I'll settle with that because I know the angels will rejoice in heaven when you repent and you come back to the Lord and you walk out of here truly understanding that people need to know the love of God and that your words and your choices can affect eternity. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the fact that you are such a loving and gracious God. God, that you leave the 99 and chase after the one. And God, help us to understand, God, that we have all been that one. And that you don't condone our choices, God, and that you don't agree with the places that we walk to sometimes, God. But thank you for the fact that you send people into our lives to share your love, God. God, help our hearts not turn from that, that we wouldn't become hardened by the ways of this world, God, that we wouldn't conform to the ways of this world, God, that if there's anything in us that is not of you, that we would, it would just be brought to the surface, God, and right now we would repent, God. We would say, oh my gosh, I realize it's not just about me admitting it, but God, I choose to understand that I have broken your heart and I never, ever want to do that again. Because when I understand who you are and what you've done in my life and the way that you have sought after me, it changes everything. God, help us to understand the love that you have for us. God, help us to understand the repentive heart that you dance over. Help us to be a repentant people, God, daily, that we would at night, every night when we lay down our heads, God, that we would understand that we have fallen short, but God, we have done, but you have loved us, God, and, and that you will continue to love us and you will continue to guide our path, God. It, it's in that obedience that we will be refreshed, God, the next morning as we step out and go about your business again. Father, I pray for the hearts and the minds of every student in here, God, that if they're feeling conviction, God, that, that we would rebuke an enemy that would desire to confuse them, to, to remove them, God, to distract them, that they would understand and, and be fully captivated by your presence right now. And that you would just speak to each of them individually, God, where they are, God, with their struggles, with their realness of the, the issues that they have, because we all have them, God, and you know better than anyone that you would begin to speak truth and life into those situations, God, that you would give us wisdom and understanding of how to respond to people. God, but make us have a burden to love people. God, give us a burden to share your word with other people, that it wouldn't be about a performance, God. It wouldn't be about our ability to communicate. It would just be about the fact that, God, you changed me, and that's all I know, and that's all I have to share. Because there are people who are desperate for you. Give us the right words, God. Give us the right situations where we can share the love of God and that the hearts would be receptive. God, help us to remember that our job is obedience, God, and your job is the results. God, it's not our job to make someone accept you, God. It's our job to tell them about who you are and give them the option to accept or reject. So we pray right now that the people that we will encounter over the next few weeks and months, God, that they would accept you, God, that we would plant seeds of truth and love into their lives. God, we just thank you again, God, that you're the, the one that chases after the one and that you never leave someone behind, that your, your perfect will is that all would come to know you and that today we would walk in that and that we would rest in that, that we don't have to perform, we don't have to live up to some measure that we've created in our minds, that we can just be your child and we can just do what you've called us to do, which is to worship you because, God, you're worthy of our praise. In your sons, I pray. Amen. Amen.